Today, we're gonna go over how you can make custom functions and tools inside of NAN to make really super customized workflows and automations with AI that will blow your mind. These custom tools can be used to pretty much do anything you want inside of an AI chatbot, like send emails, schedule meetings, book appointments, to help make your life easier. If you haven't been following my channel, NAN is quickly becoming one of my favorite tools to automate all kinds of stuff with. You can hook it up to any API you can think of, but we're specifically going to be looking at the AI agent feature today, which will allow us to build our custom tools and functions, do some really cool capabilities. If you want to work with me in any kind of AI automations project, make sure to book a free time below down in the description. But anyway, let's get on with NAN and build some tools. So I'm over on NAN and I'm currently running this on the free version of NAN that is self-hosted. If you don't know how to get NAN running for free on your own computer, you can check out my video somewhere up here where I go through step-by-step -step of how you can install it. Of course, if you don't want to install it on your computer, you can always use the paid version. I'll have a link to where you can get that down in the description below. But from here, we're going to be checking out this kind of workflow that I have on the screen right now. And this is taking advantage of the AI agent node. And from here, all we have to do is go to the plus icon here and click on advanced AI. And we're gonna be using the AI agent right here. It's a very simple AI agent. It has a couple different things we'll go over. There'll be a chat trigger already attached to it on your first go ahead. You can only have one of these in your workflow at a time. So that's why it's not connected there. But once it is, the AI agent will then take the JSON chat input from our chat session. If I make a test chat, tell me a joke, you'll notice we get an error on the first run. Conversational agent requires a chat model. In order to fix this, we need to actually include a model inside of our AI agent. So we need to drag this out right here. We could pick from one of the AI models listed on the right here. I'm gonna use the OpenAI chat model because I already have this set up. I'll just drag it over to my OpenAI chat model. We can come into here and put inside our open API key you can get on over on the OpenAI website and then also pick your preferred chat model here. We're sticking with 3.5 turbo. Then we can come into here, ask it to tell me a joke one more time. And then hopefully, look at that. Sure, here's a joke for you. Why couldn't a leopard play hide and seek? because he was always spotted. Wow, isn't that fun? We've got our AI chatbot working inside of NAN. And the cool part about NAN is we can actually take this input and this output we get from our chatbot and use it in whatever kind of other automation we want. So we can take this, put it in an Excel spreadsheet, or maybe send it to a different kind of service or a CRM or any kind of different tool. You can use these inputs here and then have them go to whatever kind of, you know, Excel or sheets or literally anything you want. But today we're going to be focusing on making tools and functions, which these will unlock some really cool capabilities. Before we get into it though, I want to mention we do have this memory feature here, part of our AI agent. You can drag this out and you can add a simple memory to your chatbot as well. You can stick with the window buffer memory. And this is the one that I would usually use. Also the output parser is another tool that comes with the AI agent. You want your outputs to be formatted in a specific way. This is how you can do so here. For our purposes, we're not really going to be needing this. And now we come to the tools option right here. And this is where we have a lot of different things that we can do to add some really cool functionality to our AI agent. First being a calculator, AI can't do math. It's actually because they're all trained on text, not trained on math. So having a calculator tool just makes it easier for the AI to do arithmetic. Then there's custom Python or JavaScript tools, search APIs, Wikipedia, Wolfram Alpha, or the custom workflow tool, which we're gonna be checking out today. We have the calculator tool. This one's been kind of hit or miss for me, but if we just say, what is, we'll type in a number times, type in another number and let's see if it gets it right. The number I got was 271666. Well, the right answer is 2718493. Okay, so that did not work. But if I were to add the calculator tool to the mix here, look at that. Now, when I copy the prompt and paste it back into here, look at that, we get the correct number. 2718493. We know that it used the calculator tool when it uses this little check mark here. And if we come into the agent, you'll see it even gives us our correct output here, indicating that we got the correct response from our calculator tool. Isn't that handy? But now we have some other tools here. First one I want to check out is the random color tool. If I were to come into our chatbot and just say, give me a random color, it probably will still give us a color. One of the many random colors you might get is indigo. But what if we want to actually make this a specific set of random colors? This is just based off a regular chat GPT query that you would call inside of a chatbot 
spot, we use this random color tool here, for instance, this will actually give us only a random color by the colors we define in our colors list here. So if I actually got rid of some of these colors here, I'll take out all of them besides red or green. We'll actually only call from these different colors. And how we can set this up, we basically have our name here, which this will be kind of what the AI agent uses to make a specific call if it thinks it needs to use a function in order to fulfill a user's request. So this name and then this description kind of go hand in hand in determining whether or not the AI agent gets called to do something with a tool, right? So by naming this my color selector, it's telling the AI agent if the user wants to select a color, this is the tool to use. And then we describe it further saying call this tool to get a random color. The input should be a string with comma separated names of each colors to exclude. So this description here is basically telling what happens when this tool gets called. And then it goes through and it runs this JavaScript and it will return a color from the list of colors here. If I were to come into here, give me a random color, we get green, right? Maybe I say it again, we're only going to get the colors that were in that list. So we have red here, if I say it again, we have green again, right? So now we're only getting the colors from that tool and you'll notice that we're calling the tool based off this little check mark here. Awesome. And now we can even do things like getting the current time. So ChatGPT doesn't actually know what time it is or any AI model for that matter. And if we were to come into here and say, what time is it? It would have no clue. But if we have our get time function here, this is a simple JavaScript function, which is just called get current time, call this tool to get the current time. And we have a simple JavaScript function here. I literally made this in ChatGPT. All I did was say, make me a simple JavaScript function to return the local time if we were to hook up our tool to the current time. And then we'll say, what time is it? It is 12, 11, 56 AM. It is very late. But now we have time capabilities inside of our chatbot. And we can make these functions as complex as we want to do individual tasks, right? And just a quick tip for when you're making these functions, especially when you're trying to make them in ChatGPT, you want it to return a variable based off one function, right? So you really want to have just one function made and then it returns one variable. So you can see this const current time calls this get current time function, which runs this. This returns a time string, which then gets returned as the current time. The current time will then be sent over to the bot to then display to us. Before I get into it, you can use things like the search API, Wikipedia, or Wolfram Alpha. They're very simple, but what we're really going to be checking out is the custom NAN workflows. And this is when you can get kind of workflow inception inside of your bot. So if you want your chat bot to basically run an entire other automated workflow on autopilot, this is how you would do it. So you can take these tools, right? And you can make a custom NAN workflow. And these are basically like the last JavaScript or Python functions, except instead of calling a JavaScript code, you would call an entirely new workflow. And this is where things get kind of crazy. We're going to start off with this making event tool here. So you can see inside, I have this make event name for a tool. And then I have a little description, call this tool when the user wants to schedule an event and send over the event time in ISO format in EST time that is given from the user. I need the time in standard format to see the time. If someone says March 1st at 1 PM, I give like a little ISO time and then send this time over. We can keep the source on database and we can set the response property name to response here. This is just basically what it's looking for when the function is finally called and it gets returned. I'll explain this a little bit more in a second here, but lastly, we need the workflow ID and this will be an entirely separate workflow different from the one that we're working on. So if we look up at the URL here, you'll see we have this workflow ID right here. This is for this workflow right here. If we make a new workflow, I have this new workflow here called make event. You'll see it has this new tag right here with this new ID because we're going to be using this make event workflow. I'm going to copy this workflow ID and then I'm going to put this inside of our make event workflow ID here. And now when we have that, whenever we want to use this tool, it will call this function sent over the required variables to this workflow ID. And how this works is it basically takes the information, pushes it to this workflow ID, and then on our workflow in order to get this to trigger, we need to use an execute workflow trigger. So it's literally just this execute workflow trigger right here. Whenever the tool in the AI agent is called, it will run this trigger on this workflow based off the workflow ID that we have defined here. And this will return a very small JSON input of the variables that is passing through. It'll basically look like this query time farm request. This will be the time that was given inside of the workflow when it gets sent over to the command. 
So we can use this JSON right here to pull this query variable from the JSON that was sent over. When it calls this workflow right here and it sends it over to Google Calendar, we can use our JSON.query right here to get the ISO date that was sent over from the chatbot, right? So we can use this JSON.query to get this variable to then when we test it, it's empty right now, so I won't make anything. I think it'll do something, yeah, for right now it makes an event. But then we can have it create an event like so. And once it creates an event, we can come into here and then this will just send back a response like the response from here. This response is looking for a response and this response will be the event has been booked. So if we test this step out, you'll see we have a response here. The event has been booked. Look at that. So now when we save this function, we come into chatbot here and we have this set up accordingly again. I'll save it as well. I'll say make a meeting for March 20th at 10 a.m. And if all goes well, the event has been booked. We got that response from our workflow in that response variable that I just showed you. If I come on over to my Google Calendar event, you'll notice I have a new event on March 20th at 10 a.m. Look at that. And you can come in here, you can add all kinds of things like the titles, or if you want to add location, or if you want to add a Google meeting, all types of things you can do to make this more custom in here. You can, you know, add things like attendees, locations, and you can pull this information from other sources as well. So if you have like a list or something, maybe people you want to add, that's how you could do that there. Let's move on to another one. In my last video I did on NAN, I actually showed you how you can scrape data with NAN all through a Google request. And we can actually call that same function in our chatbot. So I have this new function here called get LinkedIn URLs. Run this script whenever the user wants to scrape LinkedIn and get LinkedIn URLs. Just run this tool when the user wants to scrape, send over the page number with the page number you want to scrape. Doing the same thing here, database response, and we're putting in the workflow ID of our workflow here. So I have this one here for our new workflow. Let me get rid of that. This will be the same thing. This will send over our query with our basically page number like so. This is how it will look when it gets sent over. If we have head on over to our LinkedIn field here. We have our similar execute workflow trigger, which this will trigger when this gets called based on the tool. If we rig it up like so, we have our link with our string, which is basically just our link right here. And then we're getting our page string value right here. So this will be the JSON query that we get from our API request. And this will change depending on what number it pulls from our AI chatbot. So we'll keep this on JSON query. And then what this will do is it'll combine this link URL with the page number to get our new page URL. If you don't know how Google URLs work when finding LinkedIn URLs, basically we want to use this start equals 40. Every 10 is an additional page. So this would technically be page five of this specific Google link search URL of only people on LinkedIn. So we're scraping people only on this LinkedIn page here with these LinkedIn profiles. So that's how we can do this here. And this will basically just make our specific URL that we're going to scrape. And that goes through another HTTP request, which then just scrapes the entire page. This goes through another function here, which then scrapes that entire page for only the LinkedIn URLs. Then it puts those LinkedIn URLs in a Google sheet. And then at the very end, if all goes well, it will send over a response success. And all that happened based off of a query page here and then the search. So you could come in here, honestly, if you wanted to and have it. So if you wanted the chatbot to accept keywords and then send over keywords as well, you could have it say like, hey, I want only chief product officers in the United States on page five. And it will go ahead and accept those variables into the execute workflow, trigger those fields in here, set up the URL and then scrape the URL and add those LinkedIn URLs to your Google sheet if you want to do it that way, right? Um, but for this, we're going to make it pretty simple. Let's give this a test. So if I head on over to our chat by here, we'll set this up and I'll test in our chat and then say, can you scrape page one of LinkedIn? And then I'll send this request, bring over the tab here and you'll notice in my URLs we get are 10 URLs from page one. And we can even come into here and then say, can you scrape page two of LinkedIn? Come back over here. Hopefully, look at that, we get page two. And we can do the same thing for, can you give me page three? Look at that, we get page three. Page four. And we get even more LinkedIn URLs. Look at that, all through an automated chatbot. Isn't that sweet? But you get the idea, right? So you can pass in the variable from the pages and you get all different URLs based on those pages. And then lastly, the last tool that I wanna show you guys is the sending email tool. So if you want this bot to send out emails for you, 
you can do all of it in here as well. So it works very similar to the other ones. We have a send email name here, call this tool when the user wants to send an email. I don't think we actually need this here, but we basically have the workflow ID from the send email workflow here. And this one's kind of tricky, basically has two different AI agents. So we have a similar execute workflow here, which takes in the email and the query of the user that is sending the email. Then we have this AI chatbot here to do the following. So it takes in the JSON query that we get from our chat in the AI agent here. So it'll send over this JSON query. It'll go into here and then we'll say from this, give me a simple JSON formatted with email address to give me the user's email. The email needs to be sent to and the email message to make a unique message based on the prompt. You are Mike, the helpful AI bot, respond to the email. I need this in JSON format. So it's basically kind of saying, take what the AI from the last AI gave you and then put that into a simple JSON format with the message and the address. And this will just be the two variables that we need in order to send our email, basically who it's going to and what the message is. And I have this second step here, which kind of was a bit tricky to, to set up and get this working. There's probably definitely a better way to do this, but this will extract only the email address from the prompt and then parse it. So I have two separate variables to work with because it was kind of hard getting both of them to be put up in the send email node here at the very end. You'll notice I have this AI JSON output from the last output and then the AI agent item from the email format from the very first email call that we did, right? So we have the two different agents kind of making the two different variables here. This is coming from my Horizon Labs group email here. And then that will just send over our test email based off of the email address it gave us and the whatever kind of email it came up with. That's how that works there. And then we can even have this send back a edit fields here. And let's make this a manual mapping and we'll name this response. And then we'll say email sent and now we'll save this one too as well so now we're sending back our response as email sent and if we check out our thing here it's accepting the response property and now let's link this up here so now if i were to say this for instance send an email to mike powers official at gmail.com with a joke email sent look at that so now if i check out my email we have a new email hey there thank you for the joke it really made me laugh if you have any more jokes feel free to share them with me um with a joke we want to send the user a joke send the person a joke in the email email with a joke has been successfully sent to it's mike powers okay okay so it's sent me another email but there wasn't a joke in there i guess it kind of did the prompt wrong but you kind of get the idea with this you can set this up and change these prompts a bit so it pulls out the required pieces of information and then puts them in our other kind of node here to then do other kinds of actions and you can all call this based off a chat trigger here and this doesn't have to be a specific chat trigger this can be any kind of other input you want so if you want it to be like maybe an email, maybe someone sends you an email and that prompts you to book a time, right? You can get really sophisticated about these workflows here. There's all kinds of different stuff you can do here. Um, I'll have links somewhere down below where you can get all of the workflows for everything I've shown in this video so you can get it tested for yourself. I do wanna say it is a little bit buggy and there definitely can be a lot of improvement with this, but I just kinda wanna show you how it all works and how you can do something like this, create some really powerful automations. Once again, if you wanna work with me, any kind of AI or automation work, make sure to book a free call with me down in the description below. We can talk about all that good stuff there. If you want to check out the full automation and how I scrape those LinkedIn leads and the full build out of how that works, you can check out this video here where I do just that. So I'll see you guys over in that video.